Among Skeksos' strongest supporters was the Skeksis known as Skekvar. He was a grumbling, snorting, waddling warlord who was fiercely loyal to the hard-edged and unforgiving laws of the castle. Without thought, he would set all of Thra ablaze if given the chance, and drain every last Gelfling in existence just to exercise his will and domination. A born military leader and a vicious dictator, best known to all as the General. Before he was known by this title, Skekvar actually held a completely different position within the ranks of the Skeksis lords. Before the Alliance of the Crystal, he maintained the role of Ambassador, a very important job due to the somewhat peaceful nature of their relationship with the Gelfling long ago. It was Skekvar's duty to act as an intermediary between the lords of the Crystal and the lesser beings of the planet that he deemed to be weaklings in need of constant care and assistance. He saw this as an opportunity to maintain control. This became a crucial aspect of he and the Emperor's relationship during the Makrak raids, when creatures from far below the surface began to attack the citizens of the Upper World. For assistance, the Gelfling leaders called upon Skekvar to hear their word, who relayed it back to the Emperor. Skekvar was actually the one who conceived the idea to offer them assistance, but his method ended in immediate enslavement, a tactic that Skekso disagreed with. Instead, the Emperor imagined an alliance, an alliance of the Crystal, which would willingly create a Gelfling subservience for offering and maintaining their defense forever. Aside from an intervention by the Uru, the brief campaign against the Makrax was successful in gaining trust and after many trying of existing in basic harmony with the Gelfling, the Ambassador soon transformed into the General, no doubt due to his fiery display as a proud military commander. During the Arathum Wars, Skekvar maintained this dominance by not only destroying an entire population of poison spitters at the first battle of Stone in the Wood, but also taking notice of Ordon's skills as a warrior, and soon after, it was he who personally appointed Ordon as a captain at the Crystal Castle. His loyalty to Skekso and the politics which he created ran very deep, and without a doubt, he was the Emperor's most loyal supporter. But even so, that didn't mean his harsh attitude had disappeared. In fact, because of his hatred toward the Gelfling, he would always resort to bloody, unforgiving violence as a first resort. In fact, quite possibly the most important and meaningful action he ever took was slaughtering the Al Madra almost without thought, a sentiment not shared by the Emperor which proved that his behavior was often unforgivable. However, even through all of the madness, Skekvar seemed to have a dark, secretive, and even thoughtful side that no one ever witnessed. During one of their many private discussions, the Emperor asked him if he still had dreams, and if he remembered anything about the past that still pained him. Whether he was keeping secrets from even Skekso, or being truthful, he revealed that thoughts and emotions from that time remained in the darkest parts of his mind, and they both admitted that a reunion with the Uru and a re-merging into the Urskex was a nightmare scenario for both. Continuing to build and solidify trust between themselves, Skekso invited him beneath the Crystal Castle into the Catacombs to meet with the Arathum, forming a brand new alliance against the Gelfling. At the request of the Arathum, Skekvar chose a captured Tavra to be a host for the mind-controlling Threaders, and led them to Stone in the Wood, to seize the clan and return them to the castle to be drained. The plan was ultimately a success, as almost the entire population of Stonewood was enslaved by the Threaders, and doomed to feed the Crystal. However, to his dismay, Skekso later ordered the Threaders to release their control on the Gelfling, at the request of Agra, who was to be drained in their place. When Tavra had been freed, she followed Skekvar through the catacombs and successfully dealt the first of two devastating blows to the general, by nearly impaling him with her sword. If it were not for the Chamberlain stepping in to provide assistance, he surely would have perished right then and there, and because of this, his trust in the silver-tongued Skeksel greatly improved. When, at long last, the Skeksis finally came to meet the Gelfling resistance in the final battle, Skekvar foolishly decided to fight the heroic warrior Rian in one-on-one -on -one combat, and was fatally wounded by the powers of the Dual Glaive, a special weapon which had the ability to drain essence. 
Cowering and hiding himself from the view of battle, Skekvar called upon the Chamberlain for assistance once more. But this time, instead of saving his life, he took it from him and finished the job with his own sword, gladly watching the general crumble to dust. Skekvar's counterpart was an Uru called Urma the Peacemaker. Not much is known about Urma other than he was skilled at diplomacy, obviously to balance the strong storms of war through his humble nature, and that his name strongly suggests that he dedicated his entire life to finding peace. No doubt a powerful, talented, and very essential Uru. This character unfortunately died off-screen during the Second Battle of Stone in the Wood, when Skekvar was killed by the Chamberlain. Both the strong will of peace and the black force of war perished on that day. For all of his brute, brash behavior, the general was, in reality, quite scared and cowardly. Though he hid behind a great power which he maintained, his campaigns and duties as a warmonger were only given life by those who surrounded him. When alone, he was truly weak, both of body and of mind. While he slept, his nightmares crafted painful memories and fears of an inevitable reunion with his true self. And while awake, he knew nothing but pain and turmoil in all forms imaginable. He may have been an evil ambassador and a skilled warlord, but his truth was forever lost in the darkness which he created. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for my biography on the big and brutish Skekvar the General. Now it's time for you guys to leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the Great White Void. Tell me why Skekvar is your favorite Skeksis. As always, until next we meet, take care, and I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon.